Okay, I'm here to make a quick demo and comparison between these different versions of the generation loss pedal from over the years. First I should say here's my clean tone. That's a thin line um, telly going through a custom Vibrolux reverb. Both pickups, um, all the controls on the amp are just set to be nice and neutral. And uh, there is a, a Monty's uh, humbucker in the neck position, which sounds very nice indeed. Anyway, on to the generation loss. So this first one is the first version from um, Cooper FX. It's the one that I fell in love with. Um, you can hear just from turning on the pedal, all these uh, the knobs are in a sort of zero position really. That's all the way wet, that's the blend. So that's dry, that's all the way wet. It sounds warmer straight away, a bit louder perhaps. I think there's some gentle compression. To my ears it just sounds a bit nicer straight away. But um, walk you through the controls quickly, but you probably know this from, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video. But I've got a low pass filter, sweeps off all the top end, high pass filter, takes out all the low end. Um, I'm just going to loop that to make my life a bit easier. Take the noise out of that. A generation knob here, the sample rate reducer, like an analog bit crusher. Give you sort of ring mod sounds at intense positions, and eventually. And then the speed and span control the random pitch fluctuations, which is sort of the heart of the pedal. Span is how far the pitch will vary, speed is how quickly areas that is most intense. And then of course the noise. So on when I first got this, the noise wasn't that nice, it was sort of just white noise. And then um, there was an upgrade where uh, Cooper FX sent out a replacement chip and um, the noise became what it is now, which is very beautiful, um, nostalgic sort of sounding noise. I'm gonna stop that loop for a second so I can play through it. So you can hear the noise is off now. It's sort of gated to the sound of your instrument. And that's different. I think on every other version, oh no, not on this version, but on the two Chase Plus versions, that's different, where the noise will just be, I'll skip ahead just to show you quickly with the, this version, you just have non, mild or heavy on this hiss control. And the hiss is just there all the time. Um, whereas on the, the V1 and the V2 from Cooper FX, where you actually have both. So that one, oh, what have I done here? Um, the noise control here, when you turn it that way, wow, it, it works in the same way as the Cooper FX version one. When you turn it the other way, you get constant hiss, um, like on these versions. So that one in theory you sort of get best of both worlds because you have the two options. I think that if you want just a non-stop hissy noise floor, there are easier, less expensive ways to do that. Certainly in the studio, you can just use a sample of noise. Live, I'm not sure why you'd really want it, but perhaps you would. But the gated to the instrument sort of feature seems much more useful to me. And it seems to also introduce pitch fluctuations even if you have these set to, to not do that. It's got that kind of chewed up sound. It's nice if you use it in conjunction with the high pass. And it 
it's nice just to have it quite subtle and these quite subtle as a kind of always on thing I do quite a lot um, <laughs> Basically, oh, apart from so this is a dry control, a blend control. Sorry, so this is half and half dry and wet. So that way you get like a random chorus effect. Anyway, so that's basically everything that the generation loss does in essence, and then the subsequent versions are more. We'll add more ways of controlling that, but those those are the core ideas. Um, this one is the exact same pedal. I just bought a second one, so it has a different knob, but other than that, it's the same. So that I could uh, do things in stereo. Does it sound the same? Yes, I think it does all pretty much. Um, then Cooper FX announced this collaboration where they did a limited version um, with Chase Bliss. It's in the Chase Bliss sort of form factor, as you can see, and it has all the dip switches on the back, um, MIDI control, everything that a normal Chase Bliss pedal has, which is incredible, um, especially if you want to spend a lot of time really tweaking things. Um, it also adds expression pedal control um, and all the sort of ramping and um, bouncing effects that um, generation, uh, sorry, Chase Bliss pedals can do. So if I just turn that on. So I'm going to turn my loop on here. Turn this on. There we go, sorry. Um, again, I think you can hear it sounds, so start again. Okay, so I'm going to turn my loop on then turn on the generation loss. So now we have a volume control for the wet signal and then a switch for the amount of dry alongside it. So rather than the blend control and a fixed volume, we've got this and yeah, just three options. No dry signal, a small amount or the same amount as our wet. And that is how the, um, the Chase Bliss version 2 works as well. Um, I don't think it's as good for dialing in sort of chorus sounds, um, but it's quick and easy and hands-on, I suppose. The same thing um, is for the hiss. So we have none, mild, or heavy. Again, I don't think that's as good for dialing in exactly the right amount of noise. Um, and it's, it seems a shame to me that they parted with that having its own knob but we do have a second switch, and this gives us three different functions. Mod, which gives you a sort of severely chewed up tape sound. Gen. Which seems to be doing absolutely nothing. There we are, it's working in reverse. I think perhaps because I held it down. So that's like a sweep of the um, the generation knob on the other pedals, or I suspect it sweeps to where this is here. Yeah, so that brings in that control. It's out, and it drops down to where it is. It's quite nice, not that useful, sort of nice. And then filter. It's just the same thing, but with the low and high pass filter controls, brings them in and out and sweeps into them, I think. Sort of a gentle, slow sweep into them. But we still have these separate low pass and high pass filter controls, which are dispensed with on the version two. 
although there is a way of using them, but I'll get to that later. Um, other than that, speed and span has changed to wow and flutter. Wow introduces slower wobbles, and flutter introduces faster ones, which is the same way most tape delay plugins and things work um, as to whether it's better or worse than speed and span. I don't think it makes much difference, really. So, for using live, I suppose I would say overall, I'm going to stop this. It's a, it's a pretty similar pedal, but it gives you all, all those um, extra dip switch controls. Um, which for use, you know, they're useful in the studio for when you're going deep. They're not so useful for live because they're just a bit fiddly, I think. Um, but yeah, a great version of the generation loss, but perhaps not as hands-on and easy to use as this version. Um, then we move on to the Cooper FX version two. Um, I'll get my loop going again. So the first thing to say would be that this has presets. Um, actually, I should mention that one does too. It has three presets. They're quite easy to access. Um, it also has MIDI control. It also has exp expression pedal control, which I have got set up to demonstrate. It's quite nice because it's easy to set. Um, I'll stop this loop again. So to, to set a expression pedal control, you hold bypass and move this to where the toe position would be. You let go and you move it back. And so now, just sweeping the expression pedal. You can hear it sweeping the high pass filter and letting, cutting out those low frequencies. But you can also set it to control multiple knobs, so you can hear it's definitely controlling this noise. So if I hold that down, set noise to about there, let go, move it back to my heel position. So it's doing the filter sweep and introducing the noise at the same time. I can also do that with the well and flutter. So hold this, turn that, let go, turn it back. Hold this, I suspect I could do both at the same time, but just doing this to be safe, move that back. So now it's gonna introduce a decent amount of the wow and flutter as I swell with the effect, uh, expression pedal. So now that's at the toe position, you can hear it. It's pretty garbled. It's very fun to play with. Um, I'll try just showing the, uh, the gen knob in there as well. Or oh, to remove it, you hold this down and you move that knob to zero counterclockwise. And now um, that should be out of the... Let's take the noise out as well. So I think it's just sweeping the high pass filter now. Gen knob to there. So I think because that knob sort of works in the opposite way to normal, it doesn't um, work so well with the expression pedal actually. If I set this to the toe position there, so if I set it to there, and then roll it back to there, Ah, I remembered why. So the gen knob on this version, I did write to uh, Cooper FX about this. It doesn't go all the way off like it does in the other versions. So you can hear this. Or 
all the way down it gets to this nice ring mod type sound but it doesn't in the way that these other ones do totally obliterate a signal i don't think that's as useful but maybe it's more musical maybe it means you get a wider variety of usable um ring mod type sounds And on this version, you also have separate wet and dry controls rather than just the wet volume and then a dry switch. So there's my wet, uh, sorry, there's my dry, introducing the wet there for our chorus y type sound. With the expression pedal, of course, we can keep the dry in but sort of control the wet signal. Which is pretty nice. Yeah, so this also has um, MIDI control that I tested and works well um, over just about every parameter presets as I mentioned. Um, it's a great, I'm not sure whether I like it more or less than the version 1. I tend to, like I say, use this one mostly f for live. Perhaps these ones are better for recording because you can go a bit deeper and experiment more. Um, move on to the most widespread version, Generation Lost Mark II by um, Chase Bliss. Let's put my loop on. So at the moment, so there are quite a few big differences between this version and the other. At the moment, however, there's a switch on the back that sets it to classic mode. And in this version, these secondary uh, uses of the knobs come into effect. So we still have the high pass filter, the low pass filter, the generation effect which doesn't go all the way down it seems um, just like in the earlier versions um, one, th one thing I forgot to mention which we also have here is that both these versions have the have different aux effect for this button. So this one has a freeze, which is very nice. I'll show you that quickly. So that one's like a garbled tape stop sort of thing. Let's take the dry out so you can hear it best. Really garbled, comes back. If you press this version, you get a hold, a sort of freeze function, which is very nice. And I think that that is available on this version as well. And then finally, the tape stop. So different to the um, functions available on this one. This one has, let's see. I think we're doing anything, so that's presumably f on filter uh, fail. All oh, right, so perhaps because we're on uh, classic mode, we have different controls. Here. Seem like it's doing anything in classic mode, so we'll come back to that. I'm going to switch it out of classic mode now, so you can see this one. Um, ah, maybe it wasn't because it wasn't on. Which dry out. Tape stop, filter. Fail. Which seems to do a garbled thing. Nice. 
Okay, so now I'm going to switch it out of classic mode, which is on the back here. So now we're sort of looking at a new pedal that does a lot of the same things. One of the biggest differences is this model knob. So there's sort of different presets and there's a list of them in the manual modeled on all different um, VHS players, um, toys, uh, dictaphones, all kinds of different things. So this gives you very quickly lots of different tone options. Uh, play my loop again. I've got no dry, I've got no noise. Those work in the same way as, as these other ones. So you can sort of jump straight to very different sort of EQ curves, I suppose. Which is very handy for recording if you're trying to find a good sound and you're just like just jumping through different presets. Okay, so you will notice that in the new sort of default mode, we don't have separate low pass and high pass filters. We don't have a dedicated noise knob. We don't have a gen knob and we don't have a blend. Um, which are all things that are useful and I do miss sometimes, but we do have the option to bring them into effect by switching into classic mode. Another big difference is this saturation knob, which gives you a sort of um, overdrive, but introduces all these nice artifacts. It's like a nice tape overdriven saturation. so you can hear it. So it gives you a different kind of pedal really because you could not use any of the pitch effects or the noise to just use it for these really cool interesting saturation quite different to other types of overdrive handles chords nicely in a way that some fuzzes and more extreme overdrives don't Excuse me, failure. So this introduces crazier uh, artifacts. So there you hit a little pitch drop out there. Uh, sorry, volume drop out. The more you turn it up, the more just crazy random stuff will happen to your signal. And it again interacts with the model version here. I found that it's very fun to play with live with recording. Sometimes I put synths and things through it, and I think failure sounds good. And then actually, because of the randomness, it can it can be quite distracting. It can draw the ear too much, certainly on synth pads and that kind of thing. But dialing in a tiny amount, I think, is nice. And for live, especially playing solo guitar, it's great. You know, just to to introduce a bit of chaos. Um, like all Ch Chase Bliss pedals, everything is sort of rampable, bounceable, MIDI controllable. Um, there's some extra deep controls where you can control uh, the different components of the noise. You can you can go really deep with that stuff. There's a buffer that you can turn on and off. There's um, 
what else is there? the sort of like default volume levels you can set there's all kinds of advanced features you control but also there's um there were some modifications done after the original versions uh which i think let more bass through and fixed uh, some latency that some people were struggling to deal with um i haven't done either of those mods i think it seems fine to me um sure what else to say about this oh another big thing that people have been calling out for that make that separates this one from the others is stereo so it has stereo in it's a trs jack so you need sort of uh, a y split to get in and a stereo out as well you can go mono in and stereo out it has a switch on the back to do that it says miso mono in stereo out um that's really really great this also handles line level signals uh, from synths and things in a way that the earlier ones don't handle it so well and you get sort of a slightly unpleasant distortion um this doesn't have that it sounds amazing you can go in with a stereo synth and out maintain the stereo or you can go in with a mono signal and and out and introducing stereo effects um it sounds incredible it adds width that's the ori original reason i got a second one of these was so that i could do stereo you know process stereo signals uh though because they're not linked in any way it was obviously completely random which is sort of nice but these they seem to be interlinked but introducing different things on both sides and there's yeah so there's this spread control as well you can do extra stereo effects um that's really really useful so that it makes it if you were only going to have one generation loss pedal i suppose it would be this because you get so much more with that it's also widely available and the others aren't um but i for me personally perhaps if i was only going to have one i would have this but that's probably partly nostalgia and sentimental value and because i've used it the most um i quickly want to talk about these two uh they're different but they do similar things that that's not related that's just made by keeper effects and is covering some cables arcades uh is a pedal that keeper effects made that has all these different sort of cards for different presets and one of them was lo-fi which does vhs type effects like generation loss it sounds basically the same um let's turn this one off um but it has different controls again um as you can see it has well and flutter same as the others except the original uh, low pass and high pass filters and then on the other page separate dry and wet controls tone which is different not seen in any of the others and clock again not seen in any others though similar to um degeneration knob slows down the uh, processor clock introduces all kinds of horrible sounds but they're kind of great we'll go to unlistenable with massive latency the 56k modem let's put that loop back on it's very fun and you can also use it with the different um, sort of reverb and delays and things that are on the different cards to get some really crunchy, weird, horrible, different sounds. Um, it's a very fun pedal. Does a lot of the similar to Generation Lost stuff and a lot more. Um, and then I thought it was worth mentioning the Dark World because Generation Lost is so good for introducing subtle variation to, to sounds. It's very good for... Um, so ambient washy guitar stuff with lots of reverb but if you don't need a separate generation loss you can just get the dark world to do that because it has this mod effect on the uh, dark side of the pedal which gives you basically a generation loss reverb just with two knobs modify which sort of brings in pitch fluctuation and noise all in one decay which sets the length of the tail that's our shortest and this is our longest and then a mix knob that works at both sides still going 
So if it's mostly for ambient guitar, maybe just get this one instead because you can do uh, the same sort of sound that you might be looking for and so much more because it also has these sort of real um, reverb effects on the other side and they can be used one into the other, vice versa or in parallel. So that does a lot too. It's a great pedal. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover, but I suppose while they're all set up, I should turn them all on and see if any signal gets through the other side. Um, maybe not the reverb for now. This one seems to have disappeared. There it is. Okay. I don't know what a sort of setting I've left them all on. So here we go. I'm going to just play a nice big E major chord. Now, nothing going through. Garbled mess. I'm going to sort of zero all of the controls as much as possible. Um, what have I not done here? single note going through here. So you can hear what's happening to it. Just going all out now. Okay, so you can hear the <laughs> noises overwhelm the signal. So maybe I'll turn the noise off and just have the crazy pitch. Stop that and just play. <laughs> Thank you. 